Hey, what's up, Cedar Grove Christian Church? Pastor Rob here. I hope that you are having a fantastic morning. As we continue with our God's Word for you today series, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at verse 1. I do apologize that a video did not air on Friday. You may remember that last Tuesday's video, I talked about the fact that I had some issues with the recording. And as the end of the week came around, it was just, it was a... Uh, a lot of time restraints with uh, funerals and services to uh, get the other video recorded. So we're going to go ahead and record that video today, as well as the video for Friday. As we look in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul is going to begin to speak about spiritual gifts. How there are various kinds of spiritual gifts that each of us have, that have been blessed with. But that these gifts all serve for a common purpose. So today we're going to be looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. If you have your Bible, I invite you to turn over there with me. If you do not have your Bible, I would strongly encourage you to pause the video, go grab it, and come back. Let's turn over to God's Word together to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be unaware. You know that when you were pagans, you used to be enticed and led astray by mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord. Now there are different gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different ministries, but the same Lord. And there are different activities, but the same God produces each gift in each person. A manifestation of the Spirit is given to each person for the common good. To one is given a message of wisdom through the Spirit, to another a message of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by one Spirit. To one another, performing of miracles, to another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. One and the same spirit is active in all of these, distributing to each person as he wills. So as we unpack this passage this morning, there are a couple of things I want to draw to your attention. The first comes to uh, what the Apostle Paul says in chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. The Apostle Paul gives a taste for venerating the spirits, if you will, or rather testing those who are part of the body of Christ, who maybe are exhibiting some form of miraculous gift or for some form of spiritual gift. He says in verse 1, brothers, I do not, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be unaware. You know in verse 2 that when you were pagans, you used to be enticed to let astray by being idle. So he begins by saying, hey, I don't want you to be unaware. I don't want you to fall into the same traps that you used to when you were prior to your conversion to Christ, I do not want you to become enticed by idols. And then he goes on in verse 3 to give a clarification of a distinguishing uh, factor between those who were ministering according to the Spirit and those who were ministering according to things outside of the Holy Spirit. He says, Therefore, I want you to know that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So there's the distinguishing factor that the Apostle Paul gives to help differentiate and to help uh, test the spirits, if you will, is what do people think of Jesus Christ? A lot of times in the church, we become very wrapped up with people's gifts. What they're able to do versus what they're not able to do. The communication ability that they may have from the pulpit or the uh, ability to come up with creative methods of delivering a gospel-centered message, or the creative efforts of providing teaching, or the creative methods of attracting people into, with the, into the church. And each of us has been given very unique gifts that can be used for the edification of the body of Christ and the development of the church. However, the Apostle Paul gives this very stern caveat at the beginning, that we should be careful to test the spirits. So those who are proclaiming a gospel other than what is found in Scripture, a gospel other than Jesus Christ as Lord, they are not receiving their gifts via the Holy Spirit, but rather they are receiving their gifts from somewhere else. And so we be, should be very careful that as we put people in positions of leadership or positions of serving, that we are doing our due diligence to ensure that they are Bible-believing, Christ-loving, God-honoring Christians to serve in those forms of ministry, lest we open up the opportunity and the possibility for false teaching, for people being led astray, and for destruction within of the church. Now, that's the first thing I want to point to your attention, that Paul gives this idea that there needs to be a test performed by the church 
to ensure that the people are going to, who are going to be ministering with these spiritual gifts are Christ-following, Christ-loving believers. In verse 4, Paul begins his, his treatise, if you will, on spiritual gifts. And he's going to list off a bunch of different spiritual gifts. Some of them are miraculous, some of them are not. But they all have the common purpose of building up the body of Christ and glorifying Christ himself. So it doesn't matter what your gift may be. Your gift may be graphic design. Your gift may be proclaiming the gospel from the pulpit. All of that does not give an importance to a certain gift over another in itself. Because all gifts are important and vital, as the Apostle Paul says, for the edification of the body. Each of us has been given a gift of some form by the Holy Spirit for the ministry of the church. So perhaps you are sitting at home right now and you're thinking, well, I don't have any, any gift. I don't have any talent or ability that God has blessed me with that could help with the glorification of the church, that could help by evangelizing the lost, that could help by ministering. And if I may, I say that that is bumpkiss. I think that is completely just uh, an excuse, if I'm going to be perfectly candid and honest. I think a lot of times we see our gifts as maybe not as elaborate as the pastor's ability to teach or as uh, wonderful as the worship leader's ability to sing or as good as the piano player's ability to to uh, transpose music in their head to be able to make it fit what people can sing in. We look at those gifts and we go, well, those are definitely spiritual gifts. Those are definitely high caliber gifts and I don't possess those, so therefore there's nothing that God can really use me to do in the church, and that is a complete lie of Satan. It is complete deception from the enemy. No, God, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, according to the Spirit, has given us each a measure of a spiritual gift to be used to bring glory to the body of Jesus Christ. It's very important that if you have your Bible, you underline verses 4, 5, and 6, and 7. Now there are different gifts by the same Spirit. There are different ministries, but the same Lord. The thing that takes all these different gifts, all these different abilities, and combines them into one unified concept is that there is one Lord, Jesus Christ, one Holy Spirit. He says, a manifestation of verse 7 of the Spirit is given to each person for the common good. So each of us has different gifts, but they are given to us through the Holy Spirit for the common good of the body of Christ. You have a spiritual gift. Maybe you don't know what it is. Maybe that's something that we can help you determine. But you have been given a gift by God for the edification of the body of Christ. You've been given a gift by God so that you can help encourage and build your brothers and sisters up in the faith so that they can walk closer to Jesus Christ. No one should ever say that they don't have a gift, that they don't have some form of ability that God has given them to the ministry of his church, because that is simply not true. We all have different gifts. We all, all have different levels of gifting. But the purpose is the same. To bring glory to Jesus Christ and to build up the body. God bless. That's all I have for you today. We'll see you back here next episode.